priest. The, the, I don't know if excited is a good word, but the awesomeness and honor it is to hear confessions and grant absolution. It's just amazing. Um, if it's all the work of the Lord, that's what it is. I'm, I'm an instrument there who is imparting his forgiveness for the repentant person. Um, I'm a vehicle, a channel of, of that forgiveness. And I always think what a great, great honor it is to be a channel at second mass, to be a channel of the consecration, a channel of forgiveness in that God has chosen to work through me in those ways, even in my sinfulness and everything. And it's just, it's like, it's, it's just awesome, really. And so I'm always grateful for the opportunity to, to say Mass and to hear confessions, of course, and to anoint people and so on and so forth. But uh, I don't tire of it. Some people say, how can you listen so long? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't get tired of it. I just love it. And every time someone leaves the confessional, um, I give a blessing to that person and I say a prayer. And the prayer I say every time someone leaves the confessional, I say to myself, for that person coming to confession, I say, we give you thanks, Almighty God. How does it? May the Lord bless and protect you and keep you safe always. As a blessing for a person who's just finished going to confession. And then, and then uh, I think it's a prayer of thanksgiving, just like at meals. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for these and all the benefits you've given us through Christ our Lord. But this is in, in thanksgiving for the penitent who just received absolution. And then the next prayer I say right after that, with a blessing, is the Hail Mary. And that is for the next person coming in. So I do that every time. And uh, plus it's a prayer for myself too, to, that I remain open to God's grace and mercy working in that sacrament. So we had, yeah, we did have a great Palm Sunday. Uh, everything went well. And now every Sunday, I think we're gonna do work where, like when the deacon, Deacon Hunt is there, after communion, he will walk out and bring communion to St. Gerard's. And like I say, that's, that is an ancient tradition uh, in keeping with the church that around 110 AD, they write about it, that at the end of communion in the church, the bishop gives the communion to the deacon, Saborium, and the deacon leaves the church and goes to those who are um, shut in, nursing homes, uh, sick, elderly, and brings them the Eucharist. So it's, we established in St. Philip's a very, a very ancient tradition in the Catholic Church. Enough about, okay. This is Holy Week. It's begun. This is the hour that Jesus is talking about. He says, my hour has come. My hour. Wow. And like I preached at church this weekend, this was, in the Garden of Eden was Jesus' greatest temptation to say no. In fact, he says it. He does say no. He says, Abba, Dad, Father, no. They put in different words. Let, take this cup away from me. No, that's what that means. No. <laughs> but, Remember what Jesus said in other parts of the gospel, many will say, Lord, Lord, and will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of the Father. So here he is in the Garden of Eden saying no to the Father, take this cup away from me. But right on the heels of that, he says, but Father, not my will, but yours be done. In the end, the Father's will is the Son's will, and the Son's will is the Father's will. 
So that is what brings about the salvation of the world, the obedience of Jesus to the will of the Father to death. Amazing. And, and the suffering he must have felt. You imagine what it's like to be, you know, in extreme pain. I felt some of that feeling <laughs> with a crushed leg and crushed knee and stuff. But imagine being in extreme pain from not only the whipping and the beating and the disfigurement of his face and body, but the pain of feeling all the sin in the world for all, forever and ever, of every person in humanity ever has been created or ever will be created or who exists right now, Jesus Christ in the Garden of Eden felt every sin, even the slightest sin, tortured him. And he said yes. He said yes. He's our Lord and Savior. Sweet Jesus. He saved us. He wept for us. He died for us. And do you think for one second, maybe even a half, maybe even a quarter of a second, that if you're sorry for your sins and say, Lord, forgive me, do you think he's going to say, well, let me think about that. After what he went through? Of course not. He's going to say, of course I'm going to forgive your sins. That's, that's why I did what I did. Silly. <laughs> the problem is, he can't forgive them unless we ask him. And if we don't ask, we won't receive. Because God is not going to go against our free will. He's so gentle with us that even if we want to keep our sins and not have them forgiven, He'll honor that. As much as it pains him, but he'll honor it. So ask him to forgive your sins. Doggone it. <laughs> and he'll do it. Piece of pie. I know it's hard sometimes. You know, it's embarrassing. You know, I don't want to say what I did. Uh, me too. Well, I gotta go to confession. I think sometimes I want to say. Hey, look what I did. <laughs> no. It's more like, oh, I did this. Okay. So, Jesus is elated that we are asking to have our sins forgiven. And he fills us with enduring and everlasting hope and joy. So with that, let's celebrate now tonight's night prayer. Uh, the night prayer of Palm Sunday, as we now continue in this holy week. <clears throat> oh God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O oh Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Psalm 91, the psalm of God's wings, our guardian angels and all the other angels. Night holds no terror for me sleeping under God's wings. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. It is he who will free you from the snare of the fowler who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the plague that prowls in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand fall at your right. You it will never approach his faithfulness, his buckler and shield. 
Your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. You who have said, Lord, my refuge, and have made the most high your dwelling. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach where you dwell. For you, as he commanded his angels, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and trample the young lion and the dragon. Since he clings to me in love, I will free him. Protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls, I shall answer, I am with you. I will save him in distress and give him glory. With length of life, I will content him. I shall let him see my saving power. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Night holds no terror for me, sleeping under God's wings. A reading from the book of Revelation. They will see the Lord face to face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. It will never be night again, and they will not need lamplight or sunlight because the Lord God will be shining on them. They will reign forever and ever. That's us. So in an age when the world and the society and our communities and nation, where people are filled with peer, peer, with fear, panic, hopelessness, we are not those people. That's not judging them. That's just feeling sorry for them. We pray that they will return to hope in the Lord. But we're not people uh, who, who, who uh, disdain hope and live in fear. We are children of the King. Sons and daughters of the Most High God. children of Mary. We have the angels and saints of heaven around us all the time. So the world's going crazy. The country's going crazy. People are living in fear, fear of the future, living in hopelessness. Don't let it be like that with you. No matter what, don't let it be like that. Put your hope in God and your hope in Jesus Christ who conquers all. The future is God's. And we should rejoice in that, just like the psalm says tonight, and just like the second reading. They will see the Lord face to face. Does that sound like a hopeless message? I don't think so. <laughs> so we're children of hope. And surrender to hope every day. Make that a prayer. Lord, today I surrender to hope. Wow, that's powerful. That's a gift. I surrender to hope. And Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. You know why? Because we can't do a thing without him. That is hopeless. To try and do something without him. With him, everything is possible. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed us, Lord God of truth. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Let us pray. Lord, we have celebrated today the mystery of the rising of Christ's new life. May we now rest in your peace, safe from all that could harm us, and rise again refreshed and joyful to praise you throughout another day. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful end. And now, Our Lady of Sorrows, the Sword of Sorrows, Mother of Sorrows, 
The Stabat Mater Dolorosa.
You see, this is Holy Week. So from myself and St. Maria Faustina, we hope you have a blessed evening. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, and we'll see you tomorrow night, Monday of Holy Week, at 7 p.m., Daylight Saving Time. God bless you.